So um, your role on Strata Council. So we put this slide in uh, what I, for a particular reason, and that is this. When you are performing your, your duties of council or on council, you have a duty to act honestly in good faith, best interest of the strata, that's not news. Take care, diligence, and skill of a reasonably prudent, prudent person when you're making your decisions. So now that's new. When I stand back from it and I look at this issue of conflict management, what it means to me is that you are leaders in your respective communities. That is what this slide says to me. And as leaders, you set the bar and like it or not, you are held to a higher standard than the rest of the community. That is the way it is. That's the role you signed up for on council. And I think it's a great role. And the fact that you're all here tonight just shows how much you're invested in your leadership and in making your buildings and your communities better. So um, keep that in mind. You, you are leaders. You're seen as leaders. So what I'd like to do now is <clears throat> switch the energy around. We've been talking about co uh, conflict is, is negative, 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 nothing good comes from it. I don't agree with that. There is such a thing as creative conflict. So what a lot of people do around conflict is they just want to squash it out, right? Or they want to ignore it. It is, it's an, as I mentioned, it's an uncomfortable place to be. However, creative conflict is the art of harnessing difference of opinions to create an even better solution than first imagined. So what you want to do as a council member is harness the conflict for good and not evil. And you can do it. So win-lose, right? My pie or your pie becomes win-win. There's plenty of pie to share. Two heads are better than one. We collaborate. Detractors become supporters. So now you get you, you instead of thinking, okay, how many, how many votes do I need to get this resolution passed, these bylaw changes, now you've got people who are actually looking forward to it because they've had an opportunity to walk with you through the conflict. And even people that hold a difference of opinion, they can still see that the process is fair and transparent. So what creative conflict says is not everybody has to come to the same agreement all the time. Everyone has to see it as fair and transparent, and they're all looking at you for that. And you've had an opportunity to probe deep enough with the differing opinions, so that way you build a better solution. So far, so good? All right, good, excellent, thank you. So now I'm gonna shift a bit into a few, a few slides on techniques that I've learned. So this first one here, it is pure change management. For anybody that you've done project management or change leadership or you've taken your, taken your group from here to there, these are, these are very, very standard things that, that you can do as part of your council. Adopt a no surprises council and building culture. So what this means is that you actually seek out opinions you don't surprise the members of the building with uh, solutions. You engage them in the conversation. It means you don't allow communication vacuums. So here's the thing. If, if someone in your building feels that they don't have the whole story around a particular issue, what do they do? Gossip. They make it up. They make it up. No communication vacuums. So. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And the other one that I think is really key, if you're looking at the, at the council level, is ask yourself and each other, what will others say? Or what could go wrong with this particular decision? How could this play out? And then you correct for it before you get in there. So let me give you a couple of examples of this. I was at an, uh, at, we had an SGM recently, and one of the owners, put on the agenda that he, I live in an older building uh, from the late 70s, he wanted uh, to change our bylaws to allow air conditioning, right? Very modern, very modern units, put the ductwork in, it's sort of the size of a, I don't know, he said it's the size of a, I don't know, big box that sits outside. And from what he said, um, it makes no more noise than a refrigerator, right? Very modern air conditioner. So in the run up to that SGM, he didn't do much lobbying, he didn't do much communicating. He sent, we sent out sort of one page fact sheet um, that just sort of talked about it. 
And there were a lot of questions from owners about what happens if they don't put air conditioning in too, because now they might be living above or below someone who's got an AC unit on their, on their balcony, and will they hear that if their doors are open, right? So what do you think happened? The motion failed. The motion failed. And this owner was so angry, so, so angry, and angry at, at, at everybody and everything, and I can't believe it, and what's this building? I should just sell my unit. And it just started to escalate. And so given the, 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 the things I've given you so far, what could the owner have done differently to set up that conversation? Yes, sir? Bring in a unit and run it at the meeting. That is brilliant. That is, that is one example of what someone could have done to fill in that communication void and that absence of fact that then leads to speculation. And then people go, well, if I don't know, I'm just going to vote no. Yes, sir? Also do that six months before the SGM. Plan for it six months before the SGM. Absolutely use your runway. The SGM just doesn't come out of nowhere. Yes, sir, go ahead. Town hall meeting. Town hall meeting, invite everybody down, let's have a talk about this. Before, let's get all your questions out. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. I would also get the manufacturer a technician uh, who actually knows the machine. Okay. So he would be able to answer the questions that have been repeated to us here. For sure. Yeah, bring, so bring someone in from the company that's trying to sell it. They have skin in the game. They're looking to sell it, right? Bring someone in and talk about it. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Identify the Okay. Okay. Right. So what she said was, go ahead and identify those people that are going to be the most resistant, and those are the people that you look to bring on side through the communication. You look and say, what's the win? What's your real? What's your real issue here? How can I fix that for you? How can I? allay your fears around that. Yes, absolutely. And sir, yes, go ahead. Appeal to their wallets and let them know that their resale value will increase <clears throat> if it's a building that allows air conditioning. Resale value, right? Someone said, well, I don't know about the noise, but I really like resale value. So on balance, so as a council, so one of the things I heard as I was making some introductions earlier is often not only might you have conflict you're looking to solve within the building, it might also be within your own council, right? So what I'd like to, what I'd like to lay down is these are some rules of the road that I think that if your council, you and your council members agree to, it actually helps where you want to go as well, right? Because you are seen as one entity to the rest of the building, and so to be united and aligned around what are your communication protocols, how does this work? I think will get you a lot of mileage.